Good afternoon and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic. Last time we talked about Kripke frames, possible worlds and an accessibility relation between them that allow us to talk about the structure of our state space. This time we're going to talk about Kripke models, which is where we take a frame and we add information about truth and falsity so that we can eventually say something about what statements of necessity or possibility are going to be true in a given context, or more interestingly, which ones are going to be true no matter what the underlying state space looks like. So let us get up our handy dandy whiteboard. You'll remember that last time we introduced the notion of a Kripke frame using this curly calligraphic F. And this is an ordered pair of a set W consisting of the set of possible worlds and the relation R, which is the relation of accessibility between these worlds. So we have this very convenient way of drawing these little dot and arrow diagrams so that we can say things like, if this is W and this is W prime, then W prime is accessible to W and so is W2 prime. But unless we have an arrow going from this W to, oh, let's call this one X, X is not accessible from W. So these are the frames that we've got in the background. Now we're going to define Kripke models. So Kripke models are based on frames and this will be made explicit in the definition. So a Kripke model, and for this, we will use this sort of calligraphic M is also going to be an ordered pair, F, V, where F is a Kripke frame. And so as a result, sometimes we will say that F, uh, sorry, the M is the ordered triple consisting of W, R, and V, because sometimes it's useful to make this explicit. And V is what's called a valuation function, which goes from the individual proposition letters that we have and possible worlds to truth values. So they can either be true or they can be false. We're not dealing with any fuzzy logics or many valued logics or probabilistic logics. This is just boring old vanilla classical modal logic. And what we, will, what we can say is that Formally, V takes the cross product of our set of propositions W and the set of world, sorry, set of propositions P and set of worlds W, and they go to the set containing true and false. However, an easier way of representing this will be in this sort of notation. So we can say that the value of P at world W is true, and the value of Q at world W is false. So we only define this at the atomic level, but there is a nice way that we can then augment our dot and arrow diagrams for the Kripke frames into Kripke models just by annotating each world. So here P is true and Q is false. And then we could also fill out the information about all of the other worlds, but this is basically what it will look like. Now, sometimes you might have a diagram and you've got lots of different things that you're talking about being true. And so you end up just listing all of the things that are true at a given world. And you don't say anything about the falsity. Both of these are ways that we will represent our, so this is not complete. We'll draw diagrams in both of these ways, either just by listing only the formulas that are true at a given world, or by annotating them with explicit truth values like we do up here. It's just two different ways of representing the same information. So there's your Kripke models. The valuation gives us information about which atoms are true at which worlds. Now you're probably wondering, how do we get from this to the more interesting questions of which sentences are necessary or possible? I don't just want to know what are the basic facts that are going on at a particular world. That is what we will talk about next time when we give the formal definition of truth in a Kripke model. Join me then. Take care. Bye.